r slash atheism. Alexax says. I'm Christian and don't know what to believe anymore. Long, I, really looking for some advice. Especially from former Christian people. I don't know what to do. I've grown up as a Christian, and live in a Christian household, but am starting to question things. I'm non-denominational, but I have been to Catholic, Baptist, Protestant, Methodist churches you name it. I live in the Bible Belt. I've attended communion, before did Ash Wednesday been to big churches and small. But I have many questions and I don't want to be rude about it. People say to trust God's plan and everything happens for a reason. I grew up believing that God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. All powerful, all knowing, always present. When something bad happens, people will say God is just trying to make you stronger slash it's a lesson from God. When something good happens it's see. God has blessed you. But I have been exploring the dark sides of reality lately. Why would God allow slash make Junko Furu to go through the most horrendous things imaginable, and allow the torturers, to get away with it? Currently living a normal life, might I add, why would God allow an innocent child, Gabriel Fernandez to be abused in horrific ways to the point of being killed? Why would God allow the torture of Emmett Till? They were all so young. And innocent. I don't understand. God is all knowing. So he knows what would happen to these people. I'm still confused about that part too, since he is all knowing, well didn't he know who is going to heaven anyways? Well didn't he have already known, that Eve would eat the fruit? I have more questions too. What was the point of even creating us, if we keep disobeying him? Why did he create a son, to die for our sins? He flooded the earth once, why didn't he just do that again? I know that he loves us, so he sent Jesus to die for us, which confuses me even more. If he loved Junko, Gabriel, and Emmett, why would he make them go through that? God is all powerful, I know he could have done something about it. Anything about it. He allowed Jesus to walk on water. He allowed Moses to part the Red Sea. I'm also confused with the concept of heaven and hell. If you believe in God, but your boyfriend slash girlfriend doesn't, they would go to hell right. But then you are stuck in heaven depressed for the rest of eternity knowing that your love will be tortured forever. It's also a weird concept, because God allows free will, yet he is. All knowing, so he already knows who is going to heaven or hell. As said before, so basically he knows your fate already, everything about your future since the time you are born, and that you will spend eternity in hell. Are you already doomed to be in hell slash heaven from the moment you're born? I'm really confused about some moments in the Bible as well. Why did God make a bet with Satan about the torture of Job? Basically how much torture would make Job turn away from God, I thought God loved us, why would he do this to Job? Why would he place a bet, when gambling is frowned upon? And he is omnipotent, so he already knows the outcome. God says to put your trust in him, but if he can do this to job, for a bet, how can I? I don't know. I'm really confused, and don't know what to believe. I really want to believe in God, because I want my family to live for eternity. I don't want them to die. I don't want them to go to hell, and I don't want to go to hell. But at the same time, if God is real, why would he allow some of the most atrocious things happen to innocent people? If he knows about all this, dare I say, would I even want him to be my God? Because after partially reading Junker's case, I couldn't get through it, I don't know anymore. I'm kind of having a breakdown and I'm questioning everything that I know now haha. <laughs> Former Christians, how did you get past the fact? that you might spend eternity in hell. How does your family respond? Both parents grew up real religious, mom Catholic and dad Protestant. How do you know for certain that God doesn't exist? I don't know if I'm just straying from God of if this is the wake up call that I need. Edit, thanks everyone for the advice I was expecting. Maybe five comments haha. <laughs>
I've tried my best to read most of them though and I'm grateful, for those wondering, yes I'm a bit nervous about death and the afterlife. I worked in an environment, where there were kinda a lot of emergencies, old people, and very sick people. I don't think I will ever get used to seeing family members cry, and seeing old people about to die alone. I always would hope they would go to heaven, but after this post I got her accept that there isn't an afterlife. I'm getting off of reddit for a while. Dudazen says. Former Christians, how did you get past the fact? that you might spend eternity in hell. What if you are wrong about Allah? Brahma? Kthalhu? Dagon? Ereshkigal? Freya? Jahir? Hums? Ishta? Janus? Krishna? Lu? Marduk? Nephthys? Osiris? Poseidon? Quetzalcoatl? Rap? Shenyi? Shamat? Yuzum. Vishnu. Watan. Zochapili. Imi. Zeus. If you don't lose sleep worrying about the wrath of any of those guys, why make an exception for your? The only reason to be more afraid of you than you are of Darth Vader or Voldemort is because you were indoctrinated at a young age to believe that he really exists. Without that, you would instantly recognize that he's equally fictional as all the mass murdering monsters in other fantasy books. As per Pop Pop says. Basically, you deny one less god than I do. You don't believe in 2999 gods. And I don't believe in just one more. Ricky Gervais. Pause and says. Remember the mummy with Brendan Fraser and his buddy who tried to follow every religion? Just in case. Funny as hell. Wolfbinder says. We don't believe in hell, and honestly, most humans are more moral than any god. Every person's salvation, damnation or oblivion is their own decision, to make an all unproven. As for family, honestly, at a certain point, and on certain matters, their opinion means squat. Dudley Didrang says. As a former Christian, my advice is to give yourself time. Deconversion is not easy for most of us. Christianity is all I ever knew. It was part of my identity. When I was a devout Christian, I thought that atheists chose to be atheists. The truth of Christianity was so evident to me, I could not understand how anyone would stop being a Christian. But I loved the Bible, and I studied it too much. I finally had to admit, that the gospels and acts were mostly mythology, not history. In the end I found out I was wrong about non-believers. I found that it was not a choice. It was impossible for me to have faith in things, that I knew were not true. People say to trust God's plan and everything happens for a reason. I now call those types of... Things thought stoppers. Christians use them, when they have no good answers. Christians use them, when they are afraid to acknowledge the real answers. Here is my advice. Give yourself time. For a devout Christian, to leave Christianity requires a lot of emotional and psychological adjustments. It isn't important, that you end up identifying as an atheist. What I think, is important is, that you are honest with yourself. It is important to know, why you believe what you believe. Labels are not really important. The spiritual journey is more important than the destination. In fact, in searching for truth, there may never be a true destination. I found it helpful to deconvert in stages. For a while I tried to ignore the theology and focus on service. I tried on Christian, but not a member of a church. I tried on Deist 4. A while. I had been afraid, that the one unforgivable sin was denial of the Holy Ghost. For me, being a deist was a way of not denying the existence of God. Continue reading and studying. For me, Carl Sagan's book Demon Haunted World was extremely helpful. Somewhere along the way I also watched Carl Sagan's Cosmos video series. There is a newer version narrated by Neil deGrasse Tyson with updated science. I already knew the science pretty well, but seeing it in the form of the series helped, put it all in perspective for me. 
I suggest that you keep studying and investigating. Paul Enns has two excellent YouTube channels. One is Paulogia and the other is Paulogia Live. He gives very well researched reflections on the claims of Christianity. I also recommend that all people questioning Christianity read Bart Ehrman's book How Jesus. Cataplati says. Former Christians, how did you get past the fact that you might spend eternity in hell? If God is such a petty and immoral being that they'll send you to hell for eternity because you used the mind they gave you and decided there wasn't enough evidence to believe in them, yet they'll accept someone who has killed dozens of people in cold blood as long as they repent on their deathbed into heaven, then I'm not entirely convinced I wouldn't prefer hell to heaven. R slash atheism. Altruistic Road 7061 says. My former pastor is paying to have sex with my brother. I know the title is pretty crazy, but I'm honestly at a loss, ashamed, and unsure where to even tell my story. I'm not even sure if this is the right subreddit, but I need to vent, and I hope for some support. For a little background, as of now, I'm a former member of the Centro Cristiano Pineal Church in Montevideo, Uruguay, sorry if my English is not good, I'm better at Spanish. My brother left the church years ago, and works as a male escort in our city. When he made this decision, I pretty much cut him out of my life, because I didn't think it aligned with my beliefs and my church. My pastor, let's just call him KS for short, encouraged us all to shun my brother and have no contact. KS has a child that transitioned and has lived as a woman since 2010. He also cut his child out of his life and made us all stop talking to them. Fast forward to the present, KS's wife, who has always been the backbone of the church, passed away two weeks ago. KS's Transgender child was not allowed to attend the funeral. Some people in the church supported this decision, but many did not. Either way, the events that followed the funeral were what really shocked me. I personally saw KS. Meeting my brother, and picking him up in his car, my brother only lives two blocks from me, on three separate occasions. I decided to confront and reach out to my brother and he confirmed that KS has been paying him for sex. They have some kind of arrangement to see each other weekly. KS's wife wasn't even cold in the grave before he was allowing himself to have homosexual affairs and with my brother, a former church member. Honestly, I'm disgusted with the entire situation. I know I could never return to Centro Cristiano Pineal and maybe even any church. The pain has been too much. It's going to take me a long time to heal and trust anyone. Now I feel like I've lost a pastor, a brother, a church, and direction. I'm trying to keep my beliefs, but I don't even know where to go or what to do anymore. Again, I don't know if this is the right place to post all of this, but any support is appreciated. Soggy Environment 125 says, Somehow I'm sad for your brother, no safe work, no family support. I have the same type of priests in my country. Raul Mex says. Why don't you begin to make amends and ask your brother for his forgiveness? If you are as Christian as you claim, then you are the one who has failed him. Capote says. So you're okay judging and turning your back on your own brother, even though he has done you no harm. You're also okay with your pastor disowning his own child for being trans, and you also stop talking to said child, and think it's okay she wasn't allowed to attend her mother's funeral? But what shocks you is, that your pastor had gay sex. That's what bothers you? Do you even realize how unsettling your attitude is toward vulnerable people, just because of who they are? I'm sorry Op, but it is my opinion, that you're the horrible person in all of this. KS. 2. Gay Appliances says. Mm. So you were so Christ like, and cut your brother out of your life. Your pastor cut his trans child out of his life. 
It reminds me of the Bible verse, where Jesus said cut these people out of your life, because of their lifestyle, not, maybe you should beg for forgiveness from your brother for being so judgmental? You'll gain more re-establishing a relationship with your brother than trying to find another church. Almost all of them are just con men clothed in the robes of religion. Hot Mess Express 1 says. You cut him out of your life, because you were worried about what he was doing with his own body and you're supposed to be the victim in this story? Dudley Didrang says. I understand your anger. Everything is wrong about the story. It is outrageous. K. S. Should no longer be a pastor. He should not be preaching rules about human sexuality that he himself cannot follow. But ultimately, this is between your brother and KS. It is not your business. You could probably report it to the church somehow. But consider the following, you could expose yourself to legal liability. I'm not sure what the Uruguay laws about defamation are. In some Catholic countries sometimes have laws that give clergy extra protection. If you know, there are probably others who know. It is likely that other people who are in leadership at church know. They either can't or won't take action against the pastor. The best solution is to live your life. There is an old saying that, when you set out for revenge, begin by digging two graves. Awa61 says. You'll keep your beliefs, and shun your family? Sat. Usajith the Barbarian says. Sex work is fine gay sex is fine. Pushing aside your flesh and blood, because of the way God made them, and the society man built. Jesus would kick you right in the balls, while Buddha held you down, and Momo raped a kid in the corner I guess. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.